Hi, Tim Talon, Ragwood Refactory, with another Interstate Cadet tip. Today, we want to take on the challenge of having your Interstate Cadet annualed. Um, it's always a difficult challenge sometimes to get your airplane annualed, and we want to cover a few items that your IA um, should know about an Interstate Cadet. One of the first things we want to tackle today is the control column and the uh, shock unit. Now, probably the most interesting feature on an interstate cadet is the fact that the torque tube and the, and the sticks are offset. And that's because the center um, unit here for the shock strut takes up the middle uh, of the aircraft in the center here, so they had to offset the stick. You would think that might be a difficult situation, but in flight and in usage, it's perfectly normal and seems uh, it's not a factor at all in your thinking. So number one problem with the stick, of course, is obviously it gets moved a lot up and down, left and right for the ailerons. And the problem we have with it, with it is when you're inspecting these airplanes is to check to make sure that the whole stick socket unit front to back does not have a bunch of slop in it uh, fore and aft. Um, the, the manual for the interstate calls for about a tolerance of about 30 thousandths, um, which, which probably isn't very much and is just hardly even noticeable. But once it gets past that, it starts to get be more noticeable and you have a lot of um, slop in there and, and a, a noticeable clunk sometimes in that column. So the solution is to put in a spacer uh, right uh, in front of the arbor um, and the stick unit and take the slop out of that. And you can do that by, by cutting a washer that's the right size inside outside diameters and then cutting a slice in it and feeding that thing in there and wrapping it all the way around. And that will take up the, uh, the slop in your stick. So check on, check on that uh, during your annual inspection. Uh, the other item is the shock strut unit. A lot of questions come up about the shock strut unit, and, and it is an oil uh, spring uh, unit. And typically with these things, if they, are, if they have been um, overhauled and then maintained uh, appropriately for the life of the airplane, they will do well for many, many, many years. Uh, mine has been uh, in use for 35 years, and shows no sign of wear and it works perfectly. So um, many of these units um, are run low on oil and there is a little oil fill cap up on the top of the, of the stirrup here uh, that can be used for access for that. Um, so you might check on that, but by and large this unit, um, as long as it's clean and the, and the piston isn't galled, um, or shows uh, signs of excessive wear, um, that unit is probably okay. Um, it's a major effort to try to get the thing out of there. Um, so if it's not showing any um, distress, um, it's um, more than likely doing quite well. Um, also, when you're checking your shock strut, make sure to check the links here. Uh, those are prone uh, to cracking, so uh, give a good inspection and uh, take a good look at those. Uh, make sure that they're free and working uh, correctly. Another feature on, an, on the Interstate Cadets is the use of a lot of Zerk fittings, and the, and the three critical ones are on the control column um, and associated stuff. So the front ones, the front two collars for the torque tube are at the front and the back. Now. You can uh, put the, the grease gun on these things and, and lube them that way, uh, but frankly, it makes a bigger mess than it may be worth. Uh, a little simple lubrication of um, either a, a graphite or a lithium, um, even something as simple as LPS works well. And the third one in the back is on the elevator bell crank. Um, and, and that one too just needs a little bit of lubrication up on the top. That's a bronze bushing in there. Um, and just normal lubrication of those points is more than adequate. Um, the Zerk fittings are, are, would be typically used a lot if you were um, in a flying school and the airplane was being used six or eight times a day. Uh, the wear and tear on it then might uh, require the, the grease gun. 
but in typical use nowadays, it's probably not necessary. Just lubed is good enough. The other item on the control system is the rudder pedals, and they are um, susceptible to some wear down at the base of the, of the rudder pedal, and so you'll get a small amount of side movement to them. Um, you can see how much movement I've got here on this one, and, and this is more than acceptable. It's pretty typical for them, but they can get loose. Uh, there are two um, filister head screws, typically, that anchor the little caps on these things, and those can be tightened up, um, and hopefully they were set up correctly at the beginning of the restoration, so uh, it will be easier to adjust them or tighten them up uh, uh, later on, and and that's the uh, an appropriate necessary thing to look at uh, with the rudder pedals. Check to make sure that you don't have excessive side movement to them. Another item is the trim mechanism, which is overhead in the Interstate Cadets, and this unit, which is just temporarily held in place uh, because this airplane is uh, just finishing up on its restoration work, um, the trim mechanism up here is accessible typically through the zipper and, and does need lube and attention up there because they can get um, pretty stiff and uh, difficult to operate. So keep them well uh, lubricated and that will um, keep this end of the operation going. On the back end, we'll go back and take a look at the elevator back there and a couple of lube points and uh, items to check on the back end. Now, the back mechanism, as you can see, is this um, non-concentric pulley here with, the, with a, um, a slot in it, which actually runs the mechanism fore and aft for the trim tab. So make sure that these are well lubed in, in here. So that, and that they're clear and, and move adequately. If these items are lubed uh, appropriately, then you'll have trouble-free um, usage of the, of the trim mechanism. That'll it'll, uh, do well for you. Another item on the Interstate Cadet is the lip struts. Um, these airplanes now are 75 years old, so uh, the struts uh, deserve a little bit of extra attention. It, sometimes it's a little hard to tell whether you're uh, flying on the old original struts or perhaps you've had new ones welded up. Uh, but for the IA who's inspecting the airplane, uh, he needs to know a couple things. Uh, one of which, the most important thing, is to make sure that the spacer is down on the bottom where the two struts come together, right here in this area right here. There should be a spacer right in between the two struts right on the, on the lift strut bolt. And uh, it's a little bit difficult, but with a little flashlight, uh, you can determine whether that is in there. You should not have any play at all in any direction um, of the struts into the fuselage mount here. The other item is, of course, the adjustment struts, and we'll, we'll go take a look at those. Many of the cadets, uh, if they've had new struts welded up, uh, the front strut is a solid strut and, and set to the correct dihedral length. So it needs no further uh, action other than to um, make sure that it's well oiled and preserved on the inside and uh, is not damaged in any way. The back one has an adjustment fork and, and these um, T-bolts, as I call them, um, are original from the factory, 75-year-old items. And I'm recommending now that uh, people take a look at these things a little bit more seriously. And the best thing to do would actually be to pull these T-bolts out, have them magnafluxed magna and checked, and then in the logbook, enter in your logbook that that um, activity has been taken care of. So either the next owner down the road or in five years or 10 years or at some subsequent time, uh, you, can, you can have these rechecked um, as time goes on. But I think it's a good idea now to start uh, uh, getting this information into your logbook and um, have that there so that uh, timely uh, inspections can be made of these items. Uh, you don't want this to fail, and so uh, it, it's actually a critical item to uh, take care of. Next item on the interstates is the tailwheel. Um, this one has been converted to the spring leaf style uh, tailwheel 
but the originals came out of the factory with the post style tail wheel uh, which is a little bit more complicated and uh, um, involves a, a more thorough inspection but that can be done by removing the cover plate and you can look and see everything on the old post style tail wheels otherwise if you've got a spring leaf unit uh, it's a very conventional inspection and, um, and should not present any uh, issues at all um, with normal inspection and, uh, and care. The most dynamic part of an Interstate Cadet's flying uh, capabilities involves the ailerons, which are very light and responsive, uh, probably the best of any of the light airplanes. Um, they typically are rigged um, slightly more up than down, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. What I want to bring up in terms of inspection is to check on the belt crank system um, controlling the aileron, uh, which is up there. Let's take a look at an uncovered wing, and I'll show you a little bit more detail about that. Here we have an uncovered uh, wing and aileron here up against the wall waiting, waiting its turn at a restoration. And you can see in here you've got a push rod, and then there's a, a, a belt crank, and I've got these parts right here so you can see what's going on in there. Uh, the, the belt crank mount, and then, and then the belt crank, and then the cables uh, for your aileron controls. Um, there also is a little add-on uh, item um, where they have, a, they have built in an aileron stop so that uh, the wind, um, basically to keep your ailerons from banging around in the wind. So you have a limiter, stop limiter, and it, and it bangs up against that end in one direction, and the other end hits right there in the other direction. Um, you might check those, check to make sure that this little unit is actually in there. You'll have to get flashlight and mirror in there uh, to see that. The other um, you know, um, unusual factor uh, or feature about this is that um, some of the bolts in here, nuts and bolts attaching things, have to be put in in, a, in, a, in the correct order, otherwise they drag and bang into various things. Um, so you've got to check to make sure that you've got everything is, in, um, is clearing uh, the structure inside this unit in here. One of the other little items that's um, important to look at, though uh, actually impossible to see, but you can check it, is that the, there's a little bushing on the ends of the bell crank on both of these. And these little bronze bushings can be worn and at some point start to allow quite a bit of slop inside there. So you could check that uh, by uh, holding the aileron cables tight, uh, lock the stick up, and then feel for any play uh, that might be in the aileron system that's not uh, attached to uh, anything else but just the cables and you can determine whether you've got a lot of wear in there. These are usually pretty good, but I have seen some of them that have uh, worn considerably, uh, and I, are actually the bearings, the little bushings in there, are in need of uh, replacement. So that's, that's your aileron uh, belt crank area. Uh, give a good thorough inspection of that area when you're in there. One of the other important uh, things that always comes up in uh, discussions about annuals is the paperwork, of course. And there's a couple of things that uh, uh, bear reminding uh, the IA. Uh, the first of all is that the certification on this airplane, the basis for the certification is the, the old CAR 4A regulations. It, this is not a Part 23 aircraft and therefore it does not have to follow along the standards of, the, of Part 23. It does have to comply with the standards of the CAR 4A. Well, that creates problems because nobody's got a copy of that and it's a little difficult sometimes to understand um, how to, how to um, justify um, your airworthiness on this airplane uh, by uh, working with standards that you can't even get a copy of. Uh, but safe to say in this regard that the old CAR 4A regulations uh, involve several um, things that we now would consider to be important parts of uh, an airplane's paperwork, uh, one of which is an operator's manual, and there were no operator's manuals for interstates back in 1941, so an, 
uh, an owner operator manual is just not something that one you're never going to find one and and to try to um, if if you feel like you need to have something like that the best things to have besides your airworthiness and registration on the in the aircraft would be um, the owner op or I'm sorry the operating limitations on on the aircraft that were issued in 1941 have those in the airplane now the other question is weight and balance uh, a lot of people um, insist that you have to have your weight and balance in your airplane and you do not um, under a certain circumstance and that is that under the ATC type 737 ATC 737 um, it, it has a requirement there that the empty weight um, CG fall within certain limits. And if those do, then the other necessary loading conditions are not needed. You do not have to calculate those. So um, if you want to keep a, a weight and balance in your airplane, you can. But if you don't want to have your weight and balance in your airplane, you can just have a copy of the of uh, ATC 737 uh, that shows what the information is. So that's the other way to uh, get around the weight and balance issue uh, or the question of um, having your weight and balance in your airplane. Now, another uh, item that always comes up with these um, interstates and their uh, paperwork is uh, the, the limits on travel for the various um, surfaces. So. Um, that also is explained uh, right in the type certificate, so you can look that up and check your uh, travel uh, on your various surfaces, uh, and that'll give you a hint um, there. Uh, most of the time, these airplanes will, will meet the requirements, but if sometimes, for one reason or another, uh, if you're off a degree or two, uh, that's probably not going to be a critical factor. Um, you'll have to take a look at that and see how that works. Um, but that's the issues on uh, paperwork. And then the most important item, which um, is the, the blessing of all inter, um, inspection authorization folks, is the fact that interstate cadets have no ADs. There are no airworthiness directives on the interstate airframe. Now, your engine and components and other things, yes, uh, but the airframe itself, there are no ADs. So um, here's, this is a good list of some items to look for when you're doing an inspection on an interstate cadet, and I hope that this is helpful. And uh, if you have questions, you're certainly uh, welcome to contact me.